Hey guys, I'm Brian and this is Luca from Howard Algae Works. We're going to talk about film versus CR versus DR. Luca, what do you prefer? Digital or film? What's film? That's right. A lot of kids these days will just say, what's film? Because we don't have film cameras around anymore. And we're going to talk about for radiology and radiography specifically, the film versus CR, which is computed radiography, versus DR, which is digital radiography. Coming up, let's get into our comparison now of film versus CR versus DR. And one of the big advantages is dynamic range. We have a video where we describe dynamic range before, but it's basically the ability to make a good image even over a wide range of radiation dose exposures axis we're plotting the radiation dose that the image receptor sees and on this axis we're plotting for instance the film optical density or the digital number in the CRDR system. The idea here is there's a region here where film is nice and well behaved and if you have an exposure in that region you're going to get a good nice proper exposure. And we show that here where we have a hand and a arm that are properly exposed. So you can see the bones within them, but nothing is saturated. And then you can see in this region right here, there's actually not enough x-rays for the film to be properly exposed. So it actually ends up being dark and it ends up being the case that some of the anatomy are not actually well visualized at all. So even if you were to change the window width and window level settings, you won't be able to recover proper image quality. Um, that, that would be if you digitize that film, but obviously the film itself would not be able to change um, the brightness inherently. That's the case of underexposure. And then the case of overexposure is actually the reverse and it's shown here, wherein a lot of the high attenuation areas, like in the dense bones, those become saturated and you lose your ability to visualize the details within those bones. So the real benefit of digital imaging, which includes both CR and DR, is the ability over a wide dynamic range to visualize the images to visualize them properly. It's not limited by a narrow exposure range of film. We're gonna be talking about both advantages and disadvantages actually of this wider dynamic range. Film is an entry system in a lot of areas, it's still gonna be the standard because a lot of areas in the world are not affluent enough to afford for CR and DR systems and film still can produce good image quality and do a good diagnostic job. So there's nothing wrong with using film. CR is then the step up from that, wherein you can use CR a lot of times as a relatively direct replacement for your film systems. You still have the same cassette and you are using that cassette to digitize based on a phosphor within the cassette. We have more details on that one. See the link below for our CR video. Then DR, there's a couple different ways DR works, but it's the most expensive of the technologies, but you're gonna also see it has other benefits as far as the dose, uh, image quality, and speed. We're gonna get to those, but it is the most expensive, and it's typically most often working with a thin film transistor behind a scintillator. And we have another video, check the link below on that for how DR works. So we know now that as far as expense, DR is gonna be the most expensive, but as far as speed, DR is definitely gonna win the race as far as speed. There's been a number of studies. Here's one example study, which showed for a single technologist using standard traditional CR techniques, a standard exam, was taking 14 minutes for a standard CR and was taking eight minutes with the DR technology. This is because the image can be acquired directly 
There's not the need to clear the, the panel. There's other ways obviously around it with newer CR technologies or having two technologists work where one's taking the image and the other one's digitizing it. But in general, DR is going to be the fastest way to make the images. And that's a big advantage for DR, especially in the case of high throughput sites. Then finally, radiation dose. Like we talked about in that last case of the dynamic range, the CR and DR allow us to make images over a significant dynamic range here. So CR and DR, we can now make good images over a much bigger dynamic range or a much wider change in the radiation dose to the image receptor. And in the case that we underexpose, even if we have CR, the radiologist isn't gonna be happy because the image that they get is gonna be really noisy. So they're gonna give a thumbs down for the case of underexposure. Then for the case of proper exposure, the radiologist is gonna give a thumbs up. But with CR, we can now make relatively good images here, even with higher radiation dose than we need from a standpoint of the noise in the image. But the image is gonna look well, it's gonna be readable. So the radiologist, if just looking at the image, is gonna give this a thumbs up as well. So there's a range in here where the patient could be overdosed on CR systems, if not properly accounted for. So in the case that we have dose conscious staff, including the radiologist, the physicist, the technologist, again, we know we can't make a good diagnosis when the image is too noisy. So that's gonna be a thumbs down. But there's also gonna be a thumbs down for this case. We need to monitor this by monitoring our dose levels. There's also gonna be a thumbs down for this case of relatively higher exposure where the image now looks good on a CR system but it's still relatively higher exposure. So we wanna shoot for this middle range right here on a CR system. This is easier to actually get the right values on the DR system because the DR system in comparison with the CR system can have more advanced automated exposure controls because the whole panel can be read out. So you can, for instance, get a histogram of what the whole panel says and use that kind of rich information in order to perform what's called the automatic exposure control and determine what the proper radiation dose for that exposure is. With film and with CR, it's more difficult to do proper automated exposure control. So in general, also the technology behind the DR systems is a little bit more dose efficient. So from that perspective, the DR is gonna win as far as the dose efficiency. And if done properly, CR can be on the same order as film, but if done improperly, CR can actually end up leading to higher radiation dose than even film. So make sure next to dig into the details of CR and DR, we're gonna have a playlist that includes the CR and DR detailed videos of how they work from a physics perspective